very good morning my dear students today we are going to discuss about connective control systems so at the end of the class you will be able to know the importance of connective controllers why they are used what are the different types of connective controllers what is the principle involved in connective controllers and applications of connective control systems we know that to control any process we can use traditional feedback control system feedback control system gives efficient results when there is a perfect balance between number of output variables and number of uh, manipulating variables if there is an imbalance we have to go for advanced controller selective controller is used when number of output variables is more than one whereas manipulating variable is only one this type of situation we have to use selective control system so in this class we are going to discuss two types of selective control systems one is override control system and second one is auctioneering control system so in selective control system we we'll have more than one output variable but manipulating variable is only one so with one manipulating variable we can control only one output variable but we have more than one output variable to be controlled so what we do is we have to select the required output variable from the among the all output variables okay. so for that some selection is must so to select uh, the variables we use selector switches so here we'll discuss about two types of switches selector switch one is hss other one is lss okay we'll discuss about these two switches first then we'll move to the principal involved in the selector controller hss it is also called as i selector switch it is used whenever a variable uh, should not exceed an upper limit similarly low selector switch is used whenever a variable do not fall below the lower limit okay so whenever value falls below the lower limit this switch will activate similarly whenever value exceed the upper limit then hss will act uh, activate so to understand the principle involved in this uh, selective control system okay we take an example that simple thing that is production of a boiler system we know that in process industry for various heating purposes we use boiler so here we are taking a common bo uh, simple boiler here some water we are sending with the help of some hot, hot gases we are generating steam okay this steam we are sending into the discharge line from here this steam we can use it for various heating purposes this is our process okay this process we want to control here our controlling objective is pressure control of the steam we want to maintain the constant pressure or constant flow of the steam that is our target for that you can use ordinary feedback mechanism so in feedback mechanism what we do this pressure we want to control okay the our flow rate of the steam we want to control anything you can take okay so here we place the measuring sensor we measure this value with the help of the sensor then we will compare the measured value with the set point okay given by the designer that generates error that error goes to the controller pressure controller in this case or this ordinary feedback controller okay then based on the error this pressure controller will regulate the flow rate outlet flow rate for example uh, for easy understanding assume that we need 10 liters per hour or 10 psi of steam is required okay see here under normal conditions or steady state conditions we are getting the request here but if any disturbance occurs in the system this value will deviate okay so here continuously we are measuring the pressure so if value deviates from the required value 10 okay it gives information to the controller pressure controller then pressure controller will change the outlet flow rate for example we want 10 but if it is 8 we decrease the value so the pressure will increase okay if you want to decrease this we can 
increase this uh, decrease this value in that way by operating this valve we can change the pressure or flow rate of the stain so ordinary feedback loop we can use okay this way the only this part will have from here 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 this will be there so this part won't be there okay the ordinary feedback controller but what happens is uh, in during processes we need to safeguard the equipment first okay if equipment is good working condition then only we can think of, think about production of stream or production of any product okay if it equipment spoils um, break down definitely that entire batch we have to stop so loss it incurs lot of losses to the industry so here first we have two preferences one is we have to safeguard the equipment then if equipment is good then we have to produce the steam with the required pressure or required flow rate that is our target okay so here one output is pressure or flow rate of the steam that is one first one second one is here here we are using heating coil so we know that always water level should be above the heating coil then only it will work properly otherwise this coil will burn so entire operation will uh, uh, stop to avoid that one we have to make sure that always liquid level water level in this boiler is above the coil so we have to control two parameters here one is pressure or flow rate first one and second one is level liquid level also we have to control okay at a time only one we can regulate so what we do is here this in normal operating conditions okay this uh, feedback controller will work as usual so here what we are doing is here we are placing one lss lss is low selector switch here this level is continuously measured with the help of a uh, sensor a liquid level sensor okay that goes to the liquid controller liquid level controller based on the level liquid controller will take some action if there is if it if the level is above the uh, heating coil okay here there is no no action required from the liquid level controller so what happens is this value goes to the lss at the same time pressure or controller signal also goes to the lss this lss will decide which action to be given importance okay if level is above the heating coil it will cut off this signal it will give importance to only this okay so this will be connected to this final control element and flow rate will be regulated if at all if level falls below the heating coil immediately the switch activates the this connection okay so this loop will break and this loop will get into connection so it will try to regulate the level it you don't bother about the pressure at this condition of okay? course it has to save that the equipment so it will give importance to the level control so in this way we can regulate two parameters here pressure as well as level okay for this type of situation we have to use this type of controllers selective controllers so here we have two output but only one at a time we are selecting based on our preference okay similarly here we have another example that is a compressor system here also we have two things one is flow control and other one is pressure control both you can control by using this fit range control in the same principle okay another type of control next one is auctioneering control system okay the auctioneering control system also will have more than one output variable okay from that only one at a time we have to select so here for selection in previous uh, uh, override control system we have used the switches for the selection but here in auctioneering control system we give, use the auction method that means whatever value is high okay for that value will be uh, uh, preference will be given or we can go for low value also if value is low why which is the lowest okay for that preference will be given for that we'll take an example so here we have tubular reactor okay ordinary tubular reactor here some reactants we are taking okay from one end another end we are getting the product so we have filled this entire reactor with some catalyst which is a packed bed packed um, bed type tubular reactor and this is the cooling jacket for here maintaining the temperatures we are using this cooling jacket okay this is our system see here important thing is we know that in a tubular reactor reactors go through this pipe so as they pass through this uh, tube 
we will interact with the catalyst so that we will get the required product. So, product will form throughout this, throughout the length of this tube. Okay. But here problem is, uh, at some points catalyst activity will be more, some points catalyst might may not be good. Okay. So, here product may be high, product formation may be high, here product formation may be less. So, assume that here we are having exothermic reaction. So, we need to remove the heat. So, here what happens is, this product formation also depends on various parameters like reactants, its concentration, its storage, etc. Okay, so here important thing is point to point, okay, the product formation will be different. Here, X amount you may get. Here, you may get only Y amount of product. So, it will change from point to point. So, here more amount it may generate. Here, it may generate less amount. Here, it may give very high amount of uh, heat it may generate. So, at a different points of, uh, uh, different points in throughout the land, okay, we'll have different heats, okay, heat will be released. So, based on which point we have to supply the coolant, because if you supply less uh, coolant than the required amount, okay, then catalyst may, uh, cooling effect may not be sufficient, so catalyst may burn, okay, it may decompose. So, to overcome that one, we have to select the highest temperature. Okay, based on that highest temperature, we have to uh, supply the coolant. Okay, see here the process what is having. See here, different uh, places we are getting different reactions. Okay, so hot spot, that means where we are getting maximum heat, we call it as a hot spot. So, you have to identify hot spot. Based on the hot spot, we have to supply the coolant. See here, for that, for controlling this type of process, what we do is, we place sensors throughout the length of the reactor. So, here first sensor, second sensor, third sensor, fourth sensor, fifth sensor, like that we place. We get, to receive information from the all sensors, okay, this information goes to the actionizing control system. Here, from out of all these uh, sensors, it will take, it will consider only one value, which is highest or which is lowest, that one it will consider. In this case, we need to uh, consider highest temperature. So, it, whatever is in place, it is giving highest temperature, that value won't be taken into consideration. Based on that value, how much amount of coolant uh, uh, is required, calculation will be done. So, as per that calculation, this controller will send the required amount of coolant. Okay, in this way, this process will be controlled. This is how we get the control, entire control.